Well, good morning, Holy Trinity, and welcome to today's service uh, on this lovely Valentine's Day. Uh, I do hope and pray that we'll have a good time together, uh, whether you're watching this live now or whether you are watching it later in the week. Um, but as we continue, as we start this service, let us pray together. I would like to invite you to say the words that are in bold on the screen with me. Loving God, we have come to worship you. Help us to pray to you in faith, to sing your praise with gratitude, and to listen to your word with eagerness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So we're going to sing our first song of worship today, and it's a song called Your Love is Alive. Uh, later on we'll have you, Dunlop, uh, speak to us on the zeal of the Lord. So I really want to encourage you to use this song uh, to get up, do some actions, um, and just do this really zealously. i 
Hello everyone, it's good to be with you today. My name's Chloe and today we will be talking about God's big love for us. But first let's do a few fun facts about Valentine's Day. Did you know that teachers receive the most Valentine's Day cards? And did you know that Valentine's Day chocolates started in 1868 when Richard Cadbury gave his wife a box of chocolates? And now we will be talking about God's big love for us and how we can learn about the different ways God loves us. Stay tuned because there's also a few games involved. When we love someone, we think that love is really big but compared to God's love, our love is very small. See how small our love is compared to God's love. God's love is so big, he can love everyone at one time. Can you do that? Now we are going to play an activity. I want you to look at these shoes for a few seconds and I want you to find the odd pair of shoes, the shoes that don't match. Here's the answer. These are the odd pair of shoes. Did you manage to get that right? These little seeds are like God's love. When we accept Jesus, God's love is like the little seed. Planted in our hearts, the seeds grow into large trees. We love like tiny seeds before God loves in us. After we invite him into our heart, we love big, just like God. Now it's time for another game. I want you to spot the missing tree. As you can see, there's a rainbow tree, a Christmas tree, an apple tree, a black tree, and a blue tree. I'm gonna give you a few seconds to look at the screen. We're gonna do a countdown, and then you have to find the missing tree. Are you ready for the countdown? Now which tree is missing? Can you guess the right one? The answer is the apple tree. Did you get that right? Congratulations if you did. 
Lastly, our love is like a ping pong ball, whereas God's love is like a beach ball. It's big, it's bouncy, and it goes everywhere. Now it's time for our last game. In this game, I want you to see if you can find Jesus in this picture. This is like playing Where's Waldo, except you've got to find Jesus. I'll give you a few seconds. You might want to go up close to the screen for this one. There's Jesus. Did you get that right? Did you notice the sandals? Did you also notice his robe? Congratulations if you did. Now I want you to remember that God's love is as big as a shoe, God's love is tall like a tree, and God's love is wide and as big as a beach ball. So whenever you feel down or upset, just remember these things and feel encouraged. And now we will hear a poem about the love of God, narrated by Jack. The love of God is for everyone. He's always ready to forgive. The love of God is for everyone. He gave his son so we could live. Jesus loves me always. And if I feel afraid, I can feel his arms around me, making the fear fade. So if you're in the shadows and feel alone in the dark, just call the name of Jesus. He will come to warm your heart. And here's this week's memory verse. Why not take some time this week to look it up in the Bible? We love because he first loved us 1 John 4 verse 19 loved, loved. Happy Family Day, Jack, my love you, and you're the best brother. Dear Holy Trinity Church, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to each one of you that has prayed, encouraged, sent messages and sent love. Thank you. And uh, just a reminder that uh, God loves you because he loves you. This is for Mummy. Yes. What would you like to tell Mummy? Oh, that's lovely. And why do you love your mummy? Because she's so pretty. Yeah. And she smells. That's lovely. Okay, so this is a shout out to Lily and Georgia. Hello. Have a lovely Valentine's Day. Love you very much. And this is a shout out to Liz. Happy Valentine's Day. Is that a heart? Love you. Uh, shout out to my family. Happy Valentine's Day. Uh, shout out to Sue Jackson. We love you so much and see you soon. We love, love you. you. Oh, <laughs> Thank you, Chloe, for the, today's family slot. Uh, we now come to a time where we can uh, just take some time, really, and, and bring before God those things that we are really sorry for. So we're going to have a couple of moments of quiet, 
uh, where we can reflect on our lives um, and let the Holy Spirit speak to us about the things we might need to confess. And then after that, we are going to say uh, this prayer of confession together. The words will be on the screen, and I'd like to invite you to say those words and pray this prayer along with me. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Our time of intercession today will be led by Sue Petrie. And after that, we're going to sing another worship song. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you are our almighty God. You are the God who crossed the Red Sea and saved the Israelites from the Egyptians. You are the God who rose Jesus from the dead. You are the God who makes miracles happen, who speaks to us in our hearts, who brings us peace. And Lord God, we need you right now in this situation we are in. Lord, we are crying out to you. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, listen to the cry of our hearts as we ask you to bring us your peace, to bring us your strength, to bring us comfort when we cannot hug our friends, to bring us joy when all the news seems to bring us is depression and misery. Lord, bring us hope when we cannot see the end of lockdown. Bring us hope that you are the giver of hope and that you know what is going on here, Lord. You knew this was going to happen and you know the end. Heavenly Father, you are our God and we want to trust you at this time. And we ask you, Lord, come down and help us, Lord, because we need you. I want to read from Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth gives way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though the waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall, he lifts his voice, the earth melts. Lord, you have always been there for us. You are an ever-present help in trouble. You are right here in the middle with us. And as it says in the Bible, where the river whose streams make glad the city of God, and I know some people thought that this was the underground rivers that came in to bring water and bring life to Jerusalem. I pray that like that, you would bring life to us, that in our hearts as Christians, we would stand out because we are able to hope in you and we can put our trust in you and know that you have got this. And Lord, we reach out to our local community, to those who are especially lonely, to those who are especially cut off. And we pray that you would help us to be there for each other. Remind us of who we can care for, what we can do, what we can pop round with, how we can smile even when we see people outside and lift someone's spirits simply by shouting hi and bringing them some of the warmth and love that you show us. Lord, may we stand out as Christians in this community because you are holding us up and you are the light that shines through us. Lord, we need your strength. We do not have this on our own. Please come. Please fill our hearts, we pray. And we pray for the 
globe, Lord, for all the things that are going on around the world, places that sound worse than where we are. We pray for Myanmar, where the government has been overthrown. We pray for the places where the lockdowns are increasing. We pray for South Africa, where the new variant is spreading. Lord, there is trouble in a lot of our world. We pray that you would bring help and bring hope. And we pray that your name would be victorious in this, that there would be more people calling on your name at this time. Help us, dear Lord, to be faithful, to not lose sight of you, to not give up. Help us to encourage one another and to love you with all our hearts, with all our souls, with all our minds and with all our strength. And help us to know too that when we are down and feeling terrible and feeling like there is no help, and you are not there, that you are there. And that's okay, because you love us just as we are. Even if we haven't got the courage and the confidence to believe in you at the moment, you are there with us and you are holding us our hands and you will not let us down because you have never let us down, Lord God. We just thank you for all the good things you have done. We thank you that the summer is coming. We thank you that the sun is shining. We thank you that it looks likely that our children are going to be going back to school. And we thank you that we have each other, that we can communicate, that we have technology that enables us to see each other. To your glory, I pray, may you be praised and honoured. Protect our church, protect Dan and the team and give them strength, I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Poured out for all the 
So today's reading is taken from Romans 12, uh, verse 11, and that will be read by Hazel Dunlop. And straight after that, you, Dunlop, will share his thoughts on this passage and on living zealously for God. Our reading this morning is taken from Romans chapter 12 and reading verse 11. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervour serving the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning. And today is Valentine's Day, and it's rooted in romantic love. And uh, one of my friends arranged a date on a dating site. Uh, and during the introductions, uh, she said to him, I am from Wales. And he said, at least you're not from sardines. Oh, sink without trace. Well, love is a frequent theme in pop music and literature and films and TV dramas and detective stories and so on and so on. And there are many books of love poems like this one the uh, nation's favorite love poems. When a person is in love, they are filled with zeal for that person. They can think of little else. They long to be with them, and zeal is our theme today. Romantic love has many different facets. It can be very good or not. It can be unrequited. There's no guarantee your dreams will come true just because you passionately love a person. The course of true love never did run smooth. And that's a line from Shakespeare's Midsummer Night's Dream, which is a great fun romp through a whole series of um, mixed up love relationships where women fall in love with men with asses heads. Um, No change there. And uh, one of my friends liked to attract a man with an irresistible perfume. It was called New Car Leather Interior. (sighs) Works for me. Romantic comedies are full of misunderstandings. I thought you, I thought you knew how I felt. And the film Love Actually celebrates different types of romantic relationships, including the intense sadness of unfaithfulness and what it brings into a marriage. Whilst many people are celebrating romantic love today, there are lots of other things to celebrate in life. What kinds of things are you really fired up about? Are you filled with zeal about them and zeal is our theme for today. We're told in our scripture verse, never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor. Serve the Lord. 
we are living through some of the most challenging times in our national church life and in this church's life as well. It's tough to maintain our zeal in these times. And many people have lost their jobs. Those who can work online often have to work for at least eight to 10 hours on their laptops on quite often a small screen in not very good working conditions, maybe a kitchen. It's exhausting working on complicated projects and arranging international meetings with dodgy internet connections. Children, parents, and teachers are exhausted by months of online teaching and learning. Many of us feel starved of normal human relationships. We miss our family and our friends, especially in this Christian community. The end may be in view, but it feels like a long way off. Zeal and enthusiasm are linked. Enthusiasm is a real lifesaver. It's a state of mind. It releases endorphins and other brain energizing chemicals into our minds. Bear Grylls said, be the most enthusiastic person you know. In his book, A Survival Guide for Life. Enthusiasm sustains us in these tough times. It's totally infectious, encouraging those around you. It can often make the critical difference between survival and something else. Enthusiasm seeds and stimulates success. But zeal is a two-edged sword it can drive a person to achieve outstanding good or disastrous evil. Many a national leader has been driven by their zeal to lead their nation through war to victory, like Winston Churchill. But Hitler and his Nazi party were zealous in their persecution of the Jews and anyone they chose to hate and destroy. The Brexiteers were zealous in their determination to persuade Britain to leave the European Union. Terrorist groups across the world are zealous in achieving their ends by violence. Saul of Tarsus was zealous in his persecution of Christians in the early church. He tried to destroy the gospel they preached. But after a dramatic encounter with God, he was converted and then turned into a zealous gospel evangelist. So Saul the slayer became Paul the preacher. Paul's letter to the Romans from which our scripture reading is taken was written to the little Christian community in Rome. This city was the center of the most powerful empires in the world at that time. Roman citizens were encouraged to worship their emperor as God, together with a host of other gods and idols. The Roman culture was polytheistic, where these Christians lived their lives. But their Christian faith was monotheistic, one God, not many. And this immediately put them at odds with their neighbors and others in their Roman community. Being a zealous Christian in Rome was a dangerous way to live. Christians in Rome were often persecuted and executed in the bloodbath games in the Colosseum, Rome's great gladiatorial arena. 
The Open Doors organization told us last Sunday how Christians across the world are being persecuted right now. One of history's paradoxes is rooted in Rome, once a place of persecution and death for Christians, it's now the center of the Roman Catholic Church. A zeal for persecution and death has been replaced with a zeal for the gospel. Paul wrote to his fellow Christians in Rome about how the Christian life should be lived, especially about the way of love in relations with others. Louise highlighted the importance of bearing each other's burdens last Sunday in her sermon. And this is a way of showing love to others in this Christian community. In the book of Job, in the Old Testament, Job's friends sat with him on a rubbish tip as he shared his burdens with them. This was a fantastic help to him. But then things spiraled downwards. They started telling him why things had gone wrong for him. He deserved it. It was all his fault. Worst of all, the bad things were God's judgment on him, God's punishment. During this current lockdown period, it's challenging to bear one another's burdens. It's especially important to keep in touch with people who live on their own. A phone call, a Skype or a Zoom session can make a really positive impact on a person who may not have had human contact for a long time. It's important to really listen to a person who needs to share their burdens without interrupting. When a person is sharing their burdens with you, there's a temptation to try and uh, rationalize their sufferings, to tell them why all the bad stuff has happened to them, like Job. There's also a temptation to hit them with your favorite fix-it verse from the Bible. What you need to do is this. All the cliche crunches come out. Time is a great healer. You'll get over it. I know exactly how you feel. You just need to think positively. Well, will that really help? What should we do and say? Well, I find it helpful to just listen. And during my listening, I'm praying for the wisdom to say nothing or to only say what might help that person whose burdens I am sharing. Many of us are living detached, fragmented lives. Our contacts are mostly electronic, like now. We are restricted to two-dimensional cyber world relationships. I like the mute button on inline meetings. The chair of the meeting can mute everyone except the person who is speaking to the meeting. You don't get people interrupting and derailing your train of thought when you're trying to make a serious point. And I'm, I'm thinking about inventing a sort of portable mute button. Maybe. I'm in a big choir, the Thames uh, Philharmonic Choir, and during our rehearsals, everyone is muted during the sing-through. And then the conductor turns to all the muted singers on Zoom and says, that went really well, well done. It's bizarre. How does he know if he can't hear anyone singing? Our lives will never be the same again. We will not be going back to normal because we are now living in a post-Brexit world. Our relationships need to be evolved into something new. Our future 
is full of uncertainty. At Holy Trinity Richmond, we need to evolve new ways of reinventing and sustaining our zeal in our rapidly changing world. Our mission statement is Holy Trinity Richmond, a church with an open door, reaching out with God's love and power, helping one another to live for Jesus. If we're serious about achieving this, we need to be filled with unflagging zeal. But how can we do this when we're continually told by our government to stay home, save the NHS, save lives? Dan, our vicar, recently preached to us on our Vision Sunday. He presented us with a detailed program of how we can fulfill our vision with zeal during this COVID-19 year. We need masses of prayer power to sustain us and refresh our zeal to achieve our stated vision for 2021. Short prayer. O oh Lord, open our minds to understand your word and give us the zeal to action it. Amen. Thank you for your great word today, you, and for encouraging and challenging us to live zealously for the Lord. We now come to a time where we are going to affirm our faith. Uh, the words will appear on the screen, and I invite you to say these words along with me. So let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Great, so now we're going to sing our final song of worship today. Again, it's a song where you can zealously do some actions. It's a song called You Are Good. Uh, so I'd like to invite you to stand up if you're able and sing along to this song. Shine as bright as day Your love amazes me 
So before we finish our service today, there are a couple of notices uh, I would like to share with you. Well, first off, thank you very, very much for your giving responses. We've received 53, and you can see the generosity of our members in these numbers that are on the screen now. We can't thank you enough. There's still an opportunity to respond through the form on the website or by contacting Liz or Keith. But once again, thank you very, very much. And then secondly, uh, on Ash Wednesday, there will be a prayer time at 8 p.m. on Wednesday, the 17th of February. That's this coming Wednesday, and it will be via Zoom. Uh, you will have received an email with the invite, or you can contact the church office for details. And then we've developed some devotions for Lent this year, again, and uh, they will be published daily. You can use the link below, lentdevotions2021.blogspot.com, to uh, see them every day, or you can subscribe at the same place, and uh, they get sent straight to your inbox every day. Alternatively, if you would prefer a hard copy, uh, please do get in touch with the church office, with Rebecca, Kate, or Liz and they will sort you out. And then finally, don't forget, you can also check out the HDR Church blog on our website, which is published twice a week on Mondays and Wednesdays. And you can also view previous blogs and subscribe to a weekly email to have that week's blogs delivered every Friday. These have been really good. And so thank you for everyone who have contributed. And we look forward to, to reading more of that. So as we draw this service to a close, uh, a final prayer of blessing. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us always. Amen. Well, I do hope you have a lovely day and a lovely week ahead uh, and that you do enjoy this Valentine's Day. So, see you soon. <laughs>